Over the past 30 years, I've been devoting my life to animal rescues in the south of England. If this roof collapses, we're both going to be in mighty big trouble. <coughs> Never has British wildlife been more under threat. Run, Alex. He's going to slip. People and animals are increasingly coming into conflict. This is within a mile of the M25. Ah, oh, stress. Oh, it was <laughs> close. After 16 years of Wildlife SOS on the television, this is our first ever series of Wildlife SOS online. In this episode of Wildlife SOS, our latest badger cub is doing well. I'm quite pleased with that. She fed quite well. I don't want to give her too much. And I'm called out to a pigeon in a chimney. Which is all very silly because he's literally nine inches from freedom. It's been a busy week caring for the cygnet with its wonky beak after its surgery. On top of the daily feeding, cleaning and weighing, it requires an assortment of medicines. Frequent turning of the bolt on its fixator to push the beak slowly back into place and numerous trips to the swimming pool to build up the strength in its legs. Everything is going to plan. However, its tongue seems to be getting very sore. Well, there's a little bit of sharp acrylic on the top of the beak, which we smoothed off with, with, with a little sander. But the pins are also just sticking through very slightly at the bottom, and it seems to be catching the bottom of the tongue, which is possibly where the problem is. So it's going to need a call to Neil to see what he advises. Whether he can get some acrylic on the bottom just to cover those up, I don't know. But certainly not something we do here. It's yet another late night for me feeding the baby badger cub. And despite collecting her a few days ago in a collapsed state, she seems to be getting much stronger. Hey, come on in. Come on. We've got a bit more. <laughs> She's got a bit more energy now. She's got a bit of fight in her. That's really quite good. No, you can't go hiding everywhere, sweetheart. We've got to do feeding. This is where Daddy gets more food on him than you do, isn't he? And you can imagine the sort of trauma she's had. Sometime in the last 48 hours, she's out of the set. She doesn't know where her mum is. She's been freezing cold. Her temperature's dropped right down, which was unregisterable. And now she's next to a human being, which is obviously a pretty major thing. It's like us being next to a dinosaur suddenly without expecting it at all. So there's an awful lot of trauma she's been through. She's chittering a bit, so she's got a bit of strength and energy back. <laughs> She's now got that I don't want to feed thing. Come on, come on. Yeah, this is going to be a battle of wheels, isn't it? Yeah, you can't go there. No, you're going to have to feed. Come on, man, don't touch it. Come on, we want you to eat some food. Come on. Some budget cubs feed happily from a syringe, whilst others prefer to lap from a hand. This one certainly preferred the latter. I'm quite pleased with that. She fed quite well. I don't want to give her too much. She'll just feel very sick. She's now gone exploring, which is quite good. Trouble is, it's so easy to get too excited at this stage. It looks good. I feel good about it, but they can drop back. We don't know what's gone on this 48 hours. We don't know whether there's any underlying illness going on, whether she got too cold and she could get pneumonia. So it's just really carefully for the next 48 hours to see how she does. But from this sign, I'm encouraged. But I've learned from 30 years of experience, don't get too excited too quickly. The next day, just as I thought I could get some work done around the house, I'm called out on another rescue. When you finish this garden, can you do mine? I never get any chance. I suppose with gardening today, didn't get anything this done. This is a dear friend of this mine. This is my garden, either. No, this is not his garden. You're just a mug then doing that. That's a mug's game. Well, we know there's a bird there because there's bird poo dripping down the chimney. And there, staring at me, not very far up, is a pigeon, which is all very silly because he's literally nine inches from freedom. He obviously just doesn't like that slight restriction in the brickwork, which means he doesn't want to come out. So, off we go. Come on, Pidge. I've got a foot. It's a bit restrictive through there. He's going to have to lose a bit of weight. He's a fat pigeon. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. And keep fighting. No, come on, come on. Come on. Come on. Right, this. There's a 
simple as that. Now look what you've done to this lady's nice house. You've got feathers everywhere. Silly pigeon, aren't you? He's nice and fat, he's fine. He's got a little bit of scuffing on his wing, which is absolutely nothing. So he's gonna be an immediate release, less a few feathers. You're gonna go. Go on, and off you go. Go on. That's what they call a rescue release. But I'm not so sure what that is called. Could be the gardener's shuffle or even the pigeon two-step. Back at Wildlife Aid, despite feeding really well last night, the baby badger has taken a turn for the worse. I pulled Lucy in on a day off, which is a bit naughty of me, but I'm really concerned about the badger. She's really, I think, had a big setback during the day today. Um, I'm not at all happy with the way she's responding, that she's not feeding anymore. So poor old Lucy's day off has been a bit curtailed. You know when you work with animals long enough, you just get a feeling for something. Mm -hmm. Still skin and bone, obviously, you wouldn't expect much else, but she's sort of losing the fight to live. Okay. So, I mean, she, she fed well at midnight last night, took 80 to 100 mils out of my hand, just kept drinking, okay. drinking. Again, at seven this morning, exactly the same. Um, but at 10, when Emily tried to feed her, she didn't really want to know. And I'm not quite sure the best way to proceed, whether we sort of take radical action and put her on a drip or something, or whether we put her with the other badger cub. I mean, they're both such different approaches mm. that it's very hard to know. Her temperature's up to 38, she's oh, warm good. underneath. Okay. She's very pale, her gums are pale. Paler than yesterday, I think. When I don't think it's any actual illness going on because she was okay yesterday. Yeah. We know she's got a bit of an upset stomach, but her tummy doesn't feel tight or anything. Is this depression? Should we put her in with the other one and see if that helps? Yeah, I think so. I mean, it, I don't think we've got anything to lose. We can certainly bring her back again. Yeah. I just want to see if it perks her up. Obviously, before we can put the two badgers together, we need to remove the fox cub who has been keeping our original badger cub company. Hey, Lisa, where's this one going? Well, I thought we'd try her back with the cubs that she was with right in the beginning. Hopefully cool. they'll remember each other. And we might even see a quite a nice reunion. So, so they don't try to kill each other because this one now that. thinks it's a badger cub. <laughs> no, no, that's not going to happen. Oh, it's nice and warm in here. Right, so which one's you this lot? This one. They take each other again. How long has she been out? About two it's weeks? Maybe two weeks. It was a bit as if she hadn't even been away. <laughs> I'm back. I so, oh, <laughs> don't think she's forgotten that she's a fox. Not a badger. Before we unite our two badger cubs, Lucy is keen to try feeding the latest arrival again. Well, I've just made the same formula that she had last night, which has got a little bit more meat in it. So maybe she likes the meaty flavour a bit more. It's also got some of the badger milk formula in it, just to see if she prefers that. It's going to be a long process. She needs little and often, you know, she's so weak, so thin. It's just, it's going to take her a while to rebuild back up to strength. This was supposed to be the big joyful union of two cubs, but this is now a bit make or break. Hey, look, they are together and we will watch them continually for the next half an hour to see what goes on on the CCTV and we'll let them get acquainted. I'm just hoping it's the other one's activity, the other one's interest will stimulate her to be more badger-like, basically. <laughs> 